Okay, what I've got here is another TPA 3118. This is a uh, BTL, which means it's being bridged. They claim 100 watts for the one channel. Um, that's with the highest voltage possible, high distortion. So we're getting less than that. But this is still a, a very competent subwoofer amplifier here. Um, I'll provide a link in the description down below to purchase this on Amazon. There is a um, frequency control here. So this would adjust your low pass crossover. Um, it does not come with a power supply, but it does come with these knobs. Um, and this is your overall volume control here to the right. Uh, blue power LED indicator, a uh, 3.5 millimeter input jack. You also have the option of getting a, or actually it comes with a plug for this, which gives you three leads off of this so that you could wire RCAs to your project box. Um, around the back, you've got your voltage input, which accepts anywhere from 12 volts to 24 volts. And then you have your subwoofer output. I'm powering this at the moment with this tech power uh, regulated power supply. There's the model number TP1502D. I'll provide a link in the, in the description for that as well, also from Amazon. I'm running it at 12.8 volts. We'll do a little bit of a test here with this uh, subwoofer speaker. Um, this came out of a Klipsch 8 inch. It's a Klipsch 8 inch uh, from a home theater subwoofer. Then we'll run the test again with this voltage step up converter which takes 12 volts in, and there it focuses, and it gives you a 24 volt output. And I did it with and without, and adding this to the mix does really improve things quite a bit, especially if you're planning on using this in a car audio application. You could send 12 volts into that step-up converter and get your 24 volts to power this and get twice the amount of power. So here's a little quick demo on it. Okay, and that was with the 12.8 volt power supply there. I'll go ahead and wire up the step-up converter and we'll see how this looks with a 24 volt going into it. Okay, I've still got 12.8 volts here on the power supply and it's going into the step-up converter which then sends 24 volts into our subwoofer amplifier here which makes a better use of the chip and we'll see here what it does. Now keep in mind the power supply I have is only a two amp output and this does really require more than two amps. It goes into a, a current limiting uh, mode here when the bass hits if I have it too loud. So just here's an example of it. That little squealing there is the current limiting. You can see the red lights popping on here. It goes over two volts, I mean two amps rather, and it can't can't supply any more current to it. So I've got to adjust the gain on the amp, turn that down a little bit. So in closing, I would say if you wanted something cheap and 
you know, to give you a little bit of base, maybe for a home theater and a box subwoofer that used to be passive, you could power it up with this, get a laptop uh, power supply. Those are about 19 volts, usually around three and a half to four amps. Um, that should power this just fine. And if maybe you even wanted to use it in a car audio application, which I plan on trying out, um, maybe try the step up converter. Um, it was about $9 for that. The amp board itself, I think was like 14 or $15. Um, and you could have yourself a amplifier in the car very affordably, just get it into a case. If you have other odds and ends lying around like the RCA connectors and things like that. Um, you know, again, a little bit under 100 watts, probably closer to around 60, 75 at 4 ohms. Um, decent amount of gain on it for the adjustment. And you could have a powered subwoofer. Again, be sure to like my video, subscribe, leave comments down below. Any questions for me, I'll try to answer them. And check out those links to the products featured here. Thanks again. Bye.